Well, in the Old Testament, it may have seemed as if God were lavishing all of his love and attention on a single nation. But we have to remember that from the very beginning of time, God had made his love and promises available to all people. You think about when God created just Adam and Eve, or I guess you could also fast forward to when it's just Noah and his family off the ark. At those two points in history, everyone on earth knew about God, trusted in God, loved God. And then they had children, and they taught their children about God's love and his promises. And then their children had children. They taught their children about God's love and promises. And then the, in the next generation, some of them believed and passed on the faith, but then some of them said, well, we'll let the, the kids decide when they get older. Well, when then those kids got older, they chose something else. And then when their kids grew up, they passed something else on to the next generation. And then some would move away and, and have a clan over there, and that clan would turn into a nation, And on down the line, you see, it's not God's fault that at some point someone decided not to share his love and promises with their neighbors or with the next generation. But this uh, continued on and on. And then God pulled aside one man from one of the clans that still believed in him and said, Abraham, I am going to bless all the nations of the earth through you. Out of you will come someone who will be the savior of the world. Someday, the the Hebrew people, as they'll be known, will produce someone who will be a savior. And yet, he did not say that this Hebrew savior would be the savior of just the Hebrews. In fact, he explicitly told Abraham that all the nations of the earth will be blessed through you. And the whole Old Testament is all about God reaffirming that promise to Abraham's line, to Isaac and Jacob and on down throughout the generations and throughout the centuries. And while there are times that God sends a prophet on a mission trip like, uh, to other nations like Elijah going to Zarephath or like Jonah going to Nineveh, for the most part, he is speaking through the prophets to the people of Israel. And while there are some exceptions, like Ruth and Rahab, the family tree of the, uh, of the Messiah is mostly made up of Hebrew people. And over the years, you, you might understand how people would get the impression that God was only interested in helping Israel. That his love and his mercy and his providence and his promises were just for one group of people. But Paul, who is ethnically Jewish, says here that those previous generations did not understand something that is now clear. In verse 6, this mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles, that means non-Jews, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise in Christ Jesus. And that's good news for us. By grace, we get to know that that baby that the wise men worshipped as Savior is our Savior too. Are you a Gentile? So am I. I'm not from the, the tribe of Levi. I'm from the tribe of Walshmith. I'm not from Judea. I'm from Missouri. My skin tone and my eye color are different from what was typical of the Old Testament Jews. And yet God wants me to know that I am part of his family too. In fact, God wants all people from every tribe in every place with every skin tone and eye color that they are part of his family too. That's why he invited these magi from distant lands, literally moving heaven and earth so that they could come to know Jesus as their savior and worship him. That's why Jesus himself as an adult sent up his apostles out to go and make disciples of all nations. He made it his church's number one mission to go and baptize and teach people of every race and nation and tribe and language. 
The Apostle Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 3, Although I am less than the least of all the Lord's people, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God who created all things. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known. That was his intent for us. That through us, God would make it known that the Savior is born for all nations. It's by God's grace that we know him, and it's by God's grace we get to share him too. God has made his church to be the leading voice in the world calling for love across racial differences. To be the leading voice in the world calling for diversity and extending the boundless riches of Christ to all people of all nations. That means welcoming people of all kinds of backgrounds, making them feel loved and respected and known, not judging them by the color of their skin or the sound of their accent, but by viewing them for who they really are, fellow redeemed children of God, souls whom God loves so much that he sent his son down here to pay for their sins so that they have an eternal home in heaven so that they can be part of his family as well, sharing the love and promises of God with them. That was God's vision for the, the New Testament church on earth. It's also a, a foretaste of what we're going to see in heaven. The Apostle John uh, got a vision of heaven and he wrote down what he saw in Revelation chapter 7. He said, After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. John's vision isn't just our destiny in heaven, it's also becoming our reality here on earth. Today, the church in China is expected to outgrow the church in America by the year 2030. And it could include half of China's population by the year 2060. And at that point, 40% of the world's Christians will be living in sub-Saharan Africa. And if the experts are right, many of us will likely live to see black Christians become the largest ethnic group within the global church. And it's all because of Epiphany all because of this light bulb moment that God has sent Jesus to be the Savior of all nations. That God's word draws crowds of sin-weary people from all over the globe to himself. That the Savior's call of salvation extends throughout the world and enfolds all kinds of people in his arms of love and forgiveness. May God grant that here among us. May God grant that here on earth. And may God lift up our hearts to see that that is our destiny in heaven where we see the Savior of all nations and all nations surrounding their Savior, worshiping him and praising his name. God grant it. Amen.